But it actually it actually was a good question. Good question. And um, I think I think a couple of clubs a couple of clubs sprung to mind. Firstly, the obvious one the obvious one was Arsenal. Um, the obvious one was Arsenal for me. Um, obviously their their rise from being a the rise back up to the top of the table. Ten games left. They're all but likely to win the league. Um, in a in a competition where it's rich uh, like a unloaded with money. Um, or, and it's just suffocated with money. Arsenal have done it the pr- pretty much quite. They've done it pretty. They've done it quite kind of on a budget in a sense. I know they spend money, but like in the grand scheme of things, compared to City and United and Chelsea and all these clubs, they do it on a budget, which is actually pretty good for them. So yeah, they're probably a great story. They're a great story of the year, of the season. Arteta kind of de- proving all the haters wrong. Um, yeah, Sacco emerging as one of the best play, one of the best young players in the world. Xhaka turning himself into a very handy player after being a laughing stock for so long. Um, like Saliba and Gabriel becoming one of the best defensive partnerships in the world, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Arsenal definitely are a great story. Another one that came to mind was Wrexham, of course. We all know their we all know their story. Obviously, signing Ben Foster as well recently, coming out of retirement to rejoin Wrexham, who he played for in two thousand and five. I want to say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong once again. Um, I think he, I think he was on loan for them in like 05 when he was at United. I think so. Um, yeah, so there you go. That guy kind of goes full circle, and of course, their ties with. Um, we all know their ties as well with the people who own them and etc. I think it's a it's a good story. It's not like a it's not like let's not let's not pretend that it's a oh a club doing it the hard way and um doing it the hard way and kind of um coming from D like a underdog story. It's really not an underdog story. Like they spend a shit ton of money in comparison to the rest of their league. But it's kind of good to say from an external perspective, like, oh right, they're actually like Instead of instead of it being oh, look at how Man City, Liverpool, United, Arsenal, it's like oh Wrexham are like doing something as well, which is quite cool. Um, and it adds another storyline as well to to football in England and football just generally. So yeah, they're probably gonna, they're definitely going to go up. I reckon they're going to go up top as well. So um, they're definitely another story. Another one, another club that came to mind was Union Berlin, um, a club that has been that has been a perennially in the second division for so long has come from basically no I wouldn't say nowhere this season but um they currently sit third five points off top off Dortmund who are top and obviously they made it they made they were in the Europa League they got knocked out unfortunately by the club in by another union or union club in um in Belgium. So um yeah hopefully they can they can maybe shock a few shock a few people or shock a lot of people and potentially challenge Dortmund and Bayern all the way um, all the way for the Bundesliga title, that would be great to see. Obviously, another club in the Bundesliga that could have had a good story was SC Freiburg. Of course, they lost in the DFB Pokal Cup last year in the um, in the yeah in the DFB Pokal final against Leipzig on penalties. Um, they're a club that has never won a trophy in their history, like a major trophy in their history. They lost in the final last year um, in their in one of their very few finals that they've been to. They they're fourth in the league. They're in the semi final. They're in the quarter final. Yeah, quarter final of the of that cup cup competition again. They versus Bayern. So it'll be interesting to see whether they can get the job done. But they were on track to mounting a title race or for mounting a title challenge. They sit seven points off um, Dortmund. So it'll probably be a tough ask for them. But yeah, that'll be a great footballing story, no doubt. There's obviously some other stories as well. I could really go through a lot when we look when we go to um we won't go to that league just yet. When we go to um. When we go to La Liga, of course, there's there's stories obviously everywhere, and it's also the other the other side of the spectrum as well. We've got a club like Valencia, who are just who are inside the relegation zone by a point. A club that has been like when everyone thinks of Valencia, they think of a club that's in that upper mid kind of upper mid kind of top seven, top eight in the in the in the um in the in La Liga. In European competitions, but they sit in the relegation zone, so that would be big if they go down. Another one, another a big, big club going down in a big league would be something. And then obviously in League One, in League One you've got um, you've got Will Still managing, who obviously we all know the story about him. And I actually haven't touched it. I actually actually haven't touched on it in this podcast that often, but um, everyone knows the story of Will Still managing Rams in France. Went on, I think it was a fifteen game unbeaten run, was it? Um, Something like that in the league. They they their last league loss 
barring or barring the most recent loss, was a 3-0 loss to Monaco in September. They lost they've lost two games since. One was a friendly, one was in the cup, but they lost most recently against Marseille in the league. So they've got an unbelievable run. We want a history playing football football manager, youngest manager in the top five leagues, um, etc. etc. Fine being fined twenty two K twenty two K a game for him not having a license. So there's that story. So there's also the story of Marseille pushing PSG to pushing PSG all the way. They sit seven points behind with a cut with some with some games to go as well. So that's going to be interesting. But the the, the main story and the, the club that I think wanted to be spoken about when this question was asked was Napoli. Now my my good friend has been Daniel has been busting my balls to basically speak about Napoli for ages on this podcast and I thought why not let's let's have a chat about them let's speak about them and what they've been able to do and if he's listening he's probably going to hate me for saying this but the league is pretty much all but wrapped up at the moment I don't know how many points clear they are they are where are we here I can get the table up yeah they're 19 points clear it would take the capitulation of all capitulations for Napoli not to win the league this year. I don't. Is it even mathematically possible? Yeah, it's still mathematically possible for them not to win the league, but like they they have to win the league for me, out right. It would take an all, it would take an almighty crumble. So yeah, they are they obviously they they're obviously probably the story of the season considering considering their team as well. When we look at, I mean, before we even touch on before we even touch on. The two main men up front. I think it's. I think it's going to be. I think there's a lot of. There's a lot more stories around this club than what a lot of people think there are. Obviously, it's a club that mm, there's not a lot of star names. There's not a lot of star names. They're very. They're built heavily around, like a possession based kind of structured system, but it's also very fluid. And they get the best out of their best. They get the best out of their best players, which is what the best clubs in the world do. And you've got to take your hat off to them. Of course, the best, the, the, the two main men, obviously, Viktor Osimhen and Kvitschka, Kvaraksheliya. I mean, they could probably sell both of them for 300 million combined. Like, it's absurd. Kvaraksheliya, I think, signed for like 10 mil. Um, 10 mil most recently. Um, I don't think it says on Fort Mob here, but he's got 12, 12 and 10 in 23 starts. 22 years old, playing off that left wing, just so talented, so, so talented, like one of the best players in the world right now by far. And I think the story of Victor Ossiman is is one that's gone under the radar, like had a massive price tag slapped on, me, slapped on him when he, when he got signed from Lille. And he was a player that a lot of people thought, yeah, like, we're, we're, like Napoli signed him in 2020. When, a lot, when people looked at Ossiman when he was at Lille, a lot of people are like, yeah, he's played for the future. Yeah, we might we'll, we'll keep an eye on him when he's like 24, 25. He's twenty four now, turning twenty five at the end of the set at the end of the year, um, in late December. He's got 21, 21 goals in twenty one starts or twenty one goals in twenty two starts. He's a player that a lot of people thought was a flop for Napoli early on in his career. Didn't really hit the stripes. Didn't really hit the kind of impact that he wanted to. Ten goals in his first season off sixteen starts, fourteen goals off twenty three starts. So good records without being great, especially with the price tag they were slapped on him. You, a lot of people did think that he was gonna a lot of people did slam the label of flop around him or on him. Whereas now twenty one in twenty two with a couple of games to with a, quite a few games to go, he could definitely hit thirty goals in the league and I don't know how many he's got I don't know how many he's got in all competitions but the fact that Napoli are probably going to go deep in the Champions League as well. They're on that very nice side of the draw with both Milan teams and both Milan teams and Leipzig. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm just going to double check that quickly. Yeah, they're on the side with both Milan teams and Benfica. That's it. Um, yeah, they're on the yeah they're on that side. So they won't verse a big club until the final. Should they get there? I think they are going to get there. They're a massive chance to do the double. Like a big big chance to do the double. And I can't remember the uh, the last time a team has. When was the last time the team has done the the league and league and European Cup double? It probably would have been Real Madrid, at some stage in that in that early twenty or that mid to late early to mid twenty tens. It would probably yeah it would probably have to be them. If not, I think Inter did it in twenty ten. Um, probably Bayern did it the year that they won it in twenty thirteen. But it hasn't been done in a while, and I don't think it's been done by. I don't think it, it, 
yeah, probably Inter was the last Italian side to do it. So Winter was the last Italian side to win the to win the competition. So it will be it will be a fantastic story for Italian football. It'll be a f- fantastic story, fantastic story for for the the region or the city of Naples. Is it a city or is it a region? Is it a um? Is it a what's it called? A um. It's a uh, province. Is it a province? I don't think it's a province, but um, I just like that like to say that word to be honest. But yeah, of course, we all know, we all know, we all know, we all think when we think of Napoli, we think of Maradona. We think about what he was able to do for them, winning the league for them. Obviously, what's happened to to him in recent years, obviously passing away, and the fact that Napoli have been so close so many times. Last year they were close. The year before that, I'm pretty sure they were close, or maybe the year before that. Um, but yeah, if they were able to get it done, it definitely would be the story of the year, and I think they are, and yeah, there you go, there, there's your, there's your mention, Daniel, if you're listening, but yeah, Napoli, great story, hopefully they can go all the way, hopefully they can go all the way, and hopefully they can, um, really make a, make a, make a lot of people proud, and make a lot of people, it's one of the good stories in football, especially when Italian football has been dominated by the same clubs for about two decades. It's good to see. It's good to see Napoli up there and really, really giving a, a lot of people something to be proud of. So there you go.